Hello, today we're covering the sixth unit of uh, Unit 1, four points, which is called APU uh, 4.6 about watersheds. The objective here is to describe the characteristics of a watershed. It will be, if you're doing an FRQ about it, hint, hint, you're going to be explaining the environmental concept, process, or models of applied concepts. So a watershed, it's all the land that drains into a specific body of water, for example, into a river, lake, bay, stream, whatever. It's determined by the slope, ridges of land that divide the watershed, different runoff directions. So if you look here, we have one runoff over to the left, one off runoff over to the right, and it keeps on going. This is a runoff down into this area. The vegetation, soil composition, um, slope play a large role in how watersheds drain. For example, the more vegetation, like here, here, more infiltration, groundwater is going to go down into the ground much better. Uh, greater slope, like up here, is going to go faster and have more soil erosion. Soil permeability, remember how big the holes are in the ground, is determined the runoff and infiltration rates, how much is going to go down to the groundwater. Human activities of a watershed impact water quality. For example, if we cut all the trees, we'll learn more about that. Urbanization makes it impermeable surface, so it's going to run off faster. Dams, mining, etc. So the Chesapeake Bay watershed. Here we have our six states that drain into this one area called the Chesapeake Bay by a series of a whole bunch of different rivers and streams. Mix, it is a mixture of fresh water from the land with salt water from the Atlantic Ocean and the nutrients from the sediments. This makes the estuary uh, a salt marsh and it's very, very, it's one of the most productive uh, areas for photosynthesis on the planet. You can see here all the different vegetation in here, how packed in it is. Why? Because it's getting all the nutrients from upstream. Now, there are ecosystem uh, surfaces as associated with estuaries and wetlands. For example, tourism uh, revenue. For example, you want to come see it because it's so beautiful, all those beautiful birds. Therefore, you got lots of people coming to hotels, having to go out to eat, maybe getting permits to go hunt or fish. Water infiltration, making it so that there's more water down into the groundwater. Why? Because the grass slows it down, but it also traps pollutants. Habitats for food, such as fish, crabs, birds, uh, dugs, ducks, all kinds of great stuff. Storm protection is going to make it so that it's going to be harder for a hurricane or something like that to do damage or for a, a, a flood to happen. And some of the crab and fun that people can have out here. Some of the human impacts on Chesapeake Bay would be uh, eutrophication caused by nutrients going flowing down into the bay. Now, what does that mean? It means that the nitrogen goes down here and algae starts blooming because it algae does not have enough nutrients all the time. So if you have too much, they're going to go nuts. This is going to decrease the sunlight, which means the plants below it are going to die. Eventually, the algae is going to run out of nitrogen and phosphorus, and therefore the bacteria are going to use up the oxygen for decomposing both the plants and the algae. When it does that, it becomes hypoxic, low in oxygen, and fish can't live on that, and therefore it's going to die. This is different ways that eutrophication have happened here. Some, some of the sources for the nitrogen and phosphorus, for example, discharge from the water treatment plants. Uh, if it's not treated properly, there's going to be higher nitrogen and phosphorus levels. Animal waste from the f farms. Synthetic fertilizer from the, the farms and from people's lawns. So you've got water treatment here, and you've got uh, animal waste and synthetic fertilizers going in here. Other major pollutants. You can have endocrine disruptors, making it so that your insulin, maybe your uh, sex hormones, don't work properly because there are things coming into the sewage, out of the sewage treatment plants that are interfering with that. Sediment pollutions, in other words, you've got too much dirt coming into the uh, 
water because of deforestation, high speed of water because of urbanization and impermeable surfaces, agricultural tilling of uh, fields, and so forth. This increases what's known as turbidity. That's how much soil is in the, the water. If t t turbid, it's going to have a reduced photosynthesis. And it's also going to cover the rocky stream bed habitats, making it so it's harder for fish to live there. We can see here coming down out of this stream how much dirt sediment is in here, making it so right along here there's not going to be a lot of photosynthesis going on. And what happens to the fish? They die. Now, direct effects of clear cutting, what's going to happen here is there's going to be soil erosion. Why? Because there's no roots to hold it in. Two, it removes the organic and nutrients from the forest. It deposits this, this soil down here in the streams. It, with doing that, it makes the water warm because it's, it has a lower turbid, uh, albedo effect and higher turbidity, which means it's going to absorb more heat from the sun. Increased soil and uh, stream temperature, loss of tree shade. Okay, you see here lots of shade, here no shade. It's going to cause the soil temperature to go up. Why? Because soil has a lower albedo. It's going to absorb more of the light's energy. Trees are going to reflect more. Loss of seed, tree shade along rivers and streams are going to warm up the streams, especially when they have turbidity. Erosion of sediment into rivers also warms them. Some of the solutions to the watershed pollution. One, we can co put cover crops that are going to be present on agriculture all the time. And we can put two crops in here. Let's put a grass in here inside the corn so that we can, what, two, keep the, uh, the, the turbidity down, but also make two cash crops. Another thing we can do is we can, wherever there's a clear zone, say too much uh, cutting down of the trees, let's plant trees back in there so that there's going to be less runoff there. We can take the manure that is going to be, instead of going down into the stream, let's put it into a pond light here. But why don't we be very smart about it? Put it in a device that is already in use to make methane. Then take that methane to create electricity for your farm. Another thing we want to improve is if you still have a septic tank, let's upgrade it. So instead of the water just going down into the street, let's go down into the uh, watershed down into the groundwater. Another thing we can do is make this the, decrease the amount of, of impermeable surfaces uh, so that there is along the side of the road there's places for the water to go down into the groundwater. And we can also in for example the wastewater treatment plants we can improve it so that there's less and less nutrients being dumped from the wastewater treatment plant down into the river, stream, and or ocean. So let's look at practice FRQ 4.6. Deforestation can affect water quality. Can you identify one change that can occur in the water quality of streams within a watershed that has been deforested? And two, can you explain how deforestation can lead to this change? Thank you, and I hope this has been helpful.